Coming up on Mountain News this morning, the Commonwealth continues to remain above average for child maltreatment as officials work to prevent it. And the London Police Department is working towards making more connections within its community. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. We are just past 530 on Wednesday, April 3rd. Now let's send it over to meteorologist Tim Drawbridge for a look at your forecast this morning. And a good Wednesday to you, Olivia. Very active. Two waves of severe weather yesterday morning, obviously affecting basically our northern counties and yeah, north of the Mountain Parkway through the I-64 quarter. Then last night, everything basically across our southern counties as Aaron and Jim were tracking that long-lived supercell producing a couple of tornadoes across the state line in northern Tennessee on over toward Harlan, Letcher, and Pike counties. Highest wind speed yesterday morning at Moorhead at 51 miles per hour. Harlan, your gusts was 41, about 830, 845 last night. Active pattern continues the rest of the week. The colder air is coming on in and, ooh, I said two S words with accumulation. It's usually not a good thing in the beginning of April, right? Cold front is pushing on through. Here comes that colder air and the pinpoint Doppler radar right now shows a scattering of some showers across our eastern county. But here is the action that will be pivoting through as we head through the second half of the day. Speaking of, breaks of sunshine becoming breezy, scattered rain showers today in a high of 53. More about the first alert seven day forecast in a few moments. Olivia. All right, Tim, thank you. The latest report on child maltreatment indicates more than 12,000 children in the Commonwealth were victims of maltreatment in 2022. While it is a 17 and a half percent decrease from 2021, Kentucky is still higher than the national average. As WYMT's Jack Dimler shows us, Kentucky State Police is using National Child Abuse Prevention Month to draw attention to protecting the youth. A symbol of prevention. Um, and that's what we're out here to, to ensure that these children uh, grow up in a safe and stable home. Uh, we know that no child deserves to be abused nor neglected. Kentucky State Police Post 10 in Harlan put pinwheels in the yard to promote child abuse prevention as a way to let the community know who they can go to in times of need. You know, we got them placed out front of posts and we want to make sure that these kids know that uh, they're safe with us. And if a child wants to, uh, to talk or is having a problem, that, that they can approach a police officer or approach anyone. A symbol that is seen throughout the county. Along with using the pinwheels to symbolize child abuse prevention, Trooper Jacob says he will be in and out of the schools throughout the month of April teaching the kids about child abuse prevention. I want these kids to know that if they are being neglected or abused, that when they see, see me in their school, they can approach me and come and talk to me. A personal mission to protect the youth of the community. Trooper Shane Jacobs is going to help them, and I'm going to be there for them, and I'm going to do all I can to make sure that every child, it doesn't matter where you live at, I'm going to be there for you, and I'm going to help you. In Harlan, Jack Demler, WYMT Mountain News. Jacobs is encouraging all community members to get involved in helping with Child Abuse Prevention Month. For more information about how to get involved, go to PCAKY.org. We now know the funeral arrangements for the man who was shot and killed in Perry County this past weekend. Visitation for Samuel Joseph Smith will be Thursday at 6 p.m. at Lots Creek United Baptist Church. The visitation will continue on Friday at 8 a.m. also at the church. Smith's funeral will be on Saturday at 2 p.m. also at Lots Creek United Baptist Church. Smith was 38 years old. A touching tribute yesterday in Somerset, a procession carried home EMT Chastian McWhorter from Frankfurt. The 23-year-old was one of the two people who died in a crash involving an ambulance and a semi in Garrett County. The investigation into the crash is ongoing. A patient in the ambulance, 75-year-old Robert Cottle, also died. 
The London Police Department is working to make community connections along with enforcing the law. The police department has several community engagement activities they work on while also protecting folks in the community. Officer Hobie Daughtery says the city's mission is to take care of each other, pointing at how they opened the community center as a storm shelter during yesterday's storms. He says they want to build connections as well. Our main goal is to take care of the city um, and just um, develop relationships with them. That way they, um, they know we're here for them. London Police also has a community policing coordinator. On the other side of the state, the National Weather Service confirmed an EF1 tornado touchdown yesterday morning in Nelson County. It hit northeast of the Chaplin community with winds of 90 miles per hour. Our sister station in Louisville found a home severely damaged off Lawrenceburg Road. The home just happened to be on the market. And it didn't take long before people started showing up to help with the cleanup. Friends, family, and neighbors. One man was even working with a baby strapped to his back. Most all of us grew up here together, so if anybody needs anything, we're, we're there for them. Yeah, I run a trucking company, and my brother called and said, hey, need a truck up there. I said, I'll be up there in just a few minutes. So we brought the truck, and sister's here, brother's here, a lot of neighbors, everybody around, yeah. According to Governor Andy Bashir's office, an EF1 tornado also touched down in Anderson County. And there is major damage in the town of Sunbright, Tennessee, which is northwest of Knoxville. The National Weather Service says a tornado did touch down there. Officials say no injuries were reported. This was the same storm that later prompted several tornado warnings in parts of the Cumberland Valley. Some businesses were impacted by the strong winds in Jessamine County. No one was hurt, but people will be spending time trying to repair and clean up the damage caused by yesterday's storms. Winds picked up and tossed out buildings around like toys. One man with Kentucky Trailer and Shed Authority was on his way to work when he saw a mess of broken wood along with sheds being flipped over. He estimated there was about $50,000 in damage from the event. And the severe weather comes almost exactly 50 years after a devastating storm outbreak on April 3rd and 4th, 1974. A tornado outbreak hit the eastern half of the U.S. It caused more than $5 billion worth of damage and killed 319 Americans. Part of our western viewing area were affected. 71 Kentuckians were killed. When we return, millions of Americans could soon lose internet when the Affordable Connectivity Program expires at the end of April.